Still have quite a few member teams here in those draft lottery areas. Arizona, Philly, Detroit. Uh, I'm pretty sure Washington even, too. Yeah, Washington, San Jose, Anaheim, Rangers, L.A., Boston, Nashville, Columbus even, I think. No, no, no one's on the Blue Jackets. Surprise. Uh, but yeah, uh, <laughs> you can see, uh, Calgary gets moved up from eight to one. That's really the only lottery movement there. We're of course not on the list cause we are, a, we're a bona fide playoff team. Cup finalist. Yeah. Yeah. Things went super, super well until they didn't. Oh boy. All right. Well, let's check out, uh, the retirements here and see who's biting the dust. Steven Stamkos, who was in Nashville. Uh, Claude Giroux, they were all done. Kucherov definitely could have continued to play, but decides to bounce Blake Wheeler in Vancouver. Voracek, Duchesne, Eric Carlson. Yeah, most of these guys were done. Roman Yossi, Petrangelo, Toffoli. Okay. Yeah, quite a few left. <laughs> It always gets nuts when you start getting, like, you know, a, f a few years in. Start seeing some of these names ret retire. All right, how about goaltenders? Uh, Markstrom. Did he go back? No, he's in Carolina. I thought that was Calgary. You know, <laughs> thought he went back to Calgary. Bernier. Uh, so really only Markstrom, Bernier. I guess Ranta. Pretty notable goaltender, but by his games played, not too many major, major goaltenders retiring this year. Okay. So, no one, none of our coaches retired. Oh, we did have a, another another coach retire for AHL. I don't, I don't remember which one that is, but who cares. But we do have some pre-draft interviews to do here. I forget where all our picks are, but we're we're pretty okay. Drafting-wise, fucking four, I have four, no, that, that's still the three goaltenders. Yeah, a lot of goaltenders, a lot of trade value. I probably won't grab all of them. Just because I don't need to. Well, let's see if I got any other interesting things. Nope. Not really. Still those same top six guys. All of them playmakers. Holy shit. And I don't think we had any defensemen. I doubt. Yeah, we did get. No, but he's. So, yeah, not really anything. And where those pins are, they're a pretty good spread. I probably won't even bother to use interviews. Yeah. Most likely not. All right. So that's fine. So before we get into the draft, Toronto obviously won the cup. Their AHL team also won the Calder Cup. So they're a good organization right now. So there's Toronto. They also won the Presidents. So... Chuck up that curse, and yeah, there we were. Cup finalists, maybe overachievers, <laughs> considering our regular season. And But, I mean, we dominated the playoffs, man. It uh, looks like Matthews finally, you know, getting winning all that hardware and the important one. That's what we get for chirping him all the time. Yeah, Art Ross and the heart. Damn, dude, Riley got the Norris. Maloney with the Lady Bing. Uh, Hoffman, Calder, Matthews, Con Smythe. Peterson with the Vesna, William M. Jennings to Knight and Tarasov. Kovacs with the Masterton. Uh, Buffalo coach with the Jack Adams. Matt Walsh did get the Selkie, yeah, as we thought he should. Uh, Ted Lindsay to Austin Matthews, as well as the Maurice Richard. So what do you got? Four? No, five, including the Con Smythe, as well as winning the Cup. Then obviously Riley with the Norris. Yeah, pretty nuts. A lot of Leafs up there. Quite a bit, and you can see there the Toronto Marlies won the Calder Cup, so... Yeah, the Toronto organization enjoying that success. For sure. And yeah, it is pretty nuts that our... Uh, you know what I, I didn't check is uh, actually our playoff stats. Are they still going to be there? Yeah, we may have some guys getting moved down and stuff. So, like, we had two guys at point per game. Trevor Riley was just below. Misa with 18. McKenzie, 17 for Cody Smith. There was a bit of a drop-off there. You know, Tarasango, Huberto, Reinhardt. Yeah, it looks like our grinder. Yeah, all of our grinders and stuff are gone. That's because I, I didn't check right after. I was too salty. 
Way too salty. And, uh, yeah, honestly, man, we, were, we were playing Pisani all at the end. He did great. Uh, we just stopped being able to score when it got to the tech sim. It was a good record for Finerty. You know, we were winning games with him. But, yeah, we Pisani was great. So both of our goaltenders were really good. <laughs> That's, that's again, the goalie controversy continues here. Pisani's uh, contract just kicks in. Uh, Finerty's, or has it already kicked in? I think we have, so his obviously kicked in. Finerty's, I th yeah, no, he has an extension too. I guess that kicks in next year. I think it's only a one year. I'm pretty sure it was only a one year. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty nuts that Reinhardt led our uh, team in the regular season scoring, being the third line center. Uh, Putin, yeah, he's still there. We go. All right, I think I think I I think I signed this. Hundred percent, I think I signed this. Now he this should actually sign before. Yeah, it's like it's over eight mil still, which for a DFD, meh. But I mean, he's a ninety overall, or shows a ninety overall right now. I think I should one hundred percent sign this. Sign that long term. Uh, Cider doesn't want to come back. We don't really. We just kind of using him for that year. Yeah, we should be good. Well, yeah, Slavin. We can maybe keep Cider for one year, maybe if we want to. But Slavin's for sure gone now. He's gonna drop off too heavily. That's but he he worked for that one year, which is exact, exactly what we want. Now O'Sullivan should be able to take that spot. I don't know if Manning's actually going to jump. I hope he does. But we won't actually see until we decide if we, you know, until we decide to kind of let go of Mo. Yeah. He should jump if he does and a little bit concerning. We can sign someone else. I mean, we could get just get Cider back. But we won't see the jump until, you know, when we reset. So, I th I should count on him jumping. I really should. If we need to make a trade, we'll make a trade. We'll try to gain some trade value uh, for this season. But yeah, yeah. they both have... Uh, both the goaltenders have this year. Hilariously, Finerty is making a very small amount. That's it. We should, we'll have probably more... Ex well, we'll be able to see more extensions in this next season. Still not O'Sullivan. Reinhardt. I may keep Reinhardt around for another year. I'll have to check on that that situation with our uh, with our forwards. We don't have to go after him right now. We'll have plenty of money, as you can see, forty two million. Well, it'll be something closer, like thirty three. But yeah. All right. Well, let's get into the draft here, and we'll do all that kind of stuff and figure out more of the off season shiz when we get there. Nothing in the top five available, but I wasn't really interested in moving there anyway. There's a 16 available, but I don't think, yeah. Uh, no elite that we know of, so not really going to bother moving around. I got to remember where our picks are, actually. I think I think I maybe had one too many, like maybe a, a too many seconds. Yeah, I do have three seconds, so. I mean, theoretically, we could move for something. Yeah, we have 10 total picks, so we have to shed one anyway. So, yeah, maybe combine a couple of these for something that we want. So, was that 43, 51, and 63 in the second round? It was along with that, that first, which is pretty much a second. So, we can get obviously get Hutchings with our 31. Three-year ETA, two-way guy. No guarantee on X-Factors. That sucks. There's a low elite grinder center, no X factors. For your ETA, the ETAs aren't too good. Thirty-nine forty-two. So unfortunately, our second's a bit too late. So I guess we move for that. That seems like the obvious thing to do. And I can take a blind pick maybe because I could trade my later seconds for that, the fifty-one and sixty-three. But then you get to the ninety-five. And yeah, yeah, we, we we might miss out on something here, but that's okay. I mean, there's all these top sixes are freaking playmakers, so 
And all of them are going to be five-year ETA. You don't need all of them at all. They're all crashed to the net, though, so, eh, I don't know, probably grab the center. It makes more sense as a playmaker. No weaknesses, good work ethic, compete level. I wonder if that has to do with growth at all. Probably, I don't know, probably not, but, hey -o. But we can get at least a pretty good amount. Oh, yeah, we definitely don't want to miss out on the 102. That's the one that we want. That mean, I need to make sure that I have a pick for that. Hmm. Anyway, we'll make it work. All right, but we have the 43. I want to move up to, like, the 38 or something to grab, or maybe even the 37 to grab that guy. So, 33, 4, 5, 6, 7. Damn. Damn, those are all missing. So, I have to actually go for this one because it's on the block. That's really all I can do. So, it'll be. it's going to be good that we have these two seconds. May actually need all that value close um what i could do oh yeah oh my god 84 overall not bad what i could do is actually trade for third with this and then that what should help us like the 95 because then that should help us oh wait no no that's my pick um they had like a 90 something though 98 the four okay but that should help us get some of those other guys that we're looking at now i still would have to shed a pick because this probably won't go through as it is it will okay sure all right well that's two for two so i still do need to shed a pick but that's easy enough to do we now have the 95 and the 98 and the 103 that kind of uh is good for all the other pins that we have we had a lot of pins around that fourth round as you'll see here you know, we got the 102. We have a 110. Like, we can grab those two guys. And that's perfect. That's a, you know, medium elite and then this guy. Yeah. The 134. I prefer that over him, obviously. Still go for the 134. Did I have that? I think I can get that with the 120-something. Yeah, I can get him with the 127. Yeah, so I'll have to shed one of these picks. We can honestly wait and then just give away the last pick that we have. So that's probably what we're going to do, but... We shall see. Let's see the rest of that top five now. 82, Sniper, goes to Arizona. 81, Sniper to uh, Philly. A lot of Snipers. There's a Playmaker going to Detroit, 77. And then an 81 Playmaker going to Dallas. So Detroit, probably not the best pick there, but hey... Let me see. Any jump up for overalls? There should be. Maybe not, though. That was a pretty strong top five. There it is. Goldsov goes to the Rangers. Pretty good pick for them. Uh, there was a DFD. Elite into Carolina. Yeah, see, if I'd known about him. But we, no, we don't really need him. We have our defensive core pretty much locked in. Another good overall guy. Quite a few of them. Yeah. All right, let's go up to our pick here. Um, We're going to call a few timeouts. And check out the members here. So let's do that. So we do have some peeps on the uh, ducks. Well, just one person. Crazy train. 83 at 23. So yeah, he finally kind of panned out. He had 36 points in his rookie season. Played in the playoffs. No, he didn't. Um, again, he has all the stats, so he just needs the shot, right? So, he's there now. Said he was on the first line. I don't think that's accurate. Um, yeah, he's got the stats. Plus good face-offs. He's kind of good everywhere. So, again, just needs that shot. Late bloomer, but he made it. Solo ball, 88 at 24. He, oh, yeah, he's a defenseman. 51 points and a minus... 15 points and a minus 51. Oh, Arizona. I'm not even going to bother checking playoffs. Because we know they didn't make it. It's amazing his puck skills and then his awareness. It's just... Yeah. But very, very good shutdown guy. Very good shutdown. Jonathan Coggins kind of capping out at 85, but... Hey, he's what, a grinder or an enforcer? 29 point, yeah. Pretty nuts. Good stats for a grinder. Actually a pretty decent skater. Yeah. Not too bad. And Mr. Selkie, Matt Walsh, a top six, by the way, 
88 overall, 24. Drafted 19th overall, what a pick. 78 points, plus 10. We know he won the Selkie. He's absolutely leading this Boston team. They did not make the playoffs, however, for the last couple of years, actually. Kind of nuts that he won the Selkie. His not like his defensive stats are incredible. His face-offs are even only not, not 88. So, that's kind of nuts, but he did it. Look at that offense, man. 99 and 98. Pretty, yeah, it's kind of surprising that he's a playmaker. Not with the strongest defensive stats, but he won the Selkie. Good for him. Little Waterbug, 5'9". <laughs> Super good. All right, got a couple people on the Sabres, including Bo Fortin with 74 points. He's either matched or increased his point total every single year so far. He's now a 30-goal, 40-assist guy two years in a row. Did make the playoffs, only three points in seven games played. They lost in the first round. But good numbers. Yeah, good stats all the way across. Looking solid. Okay. Uh, this Doucet. Where is he at? There he is. 84 at 23. So kind of a mid-liner right now. Middle six type guy. 37 points plus uh, 15. What Did have 20 goals. Point per game in the playoffs. So stepped up in his role. Says second line only. Might be accurate. I don't know. Looks like more like third line numbers to me, but no power play, so I guess, yeah. Maybe not a strong supporting cast around him. The awarenesses are a bit low, but still getting the job done. He's going to be more of a goal-scoring type guy for sure. All right. In Carolina, we have Maloney. 90 overall. 86-point season. 27 points, 42 goals, 44 assists. That's a breakout. He got a couple 66, you know, point seasons. You'd have a 40 goal rookie campaign and then good gracious comes back and he is a complete player in the playoffs. Five points in six games played. So first round exit for Carolina. But yeah, pretty scary. Definitely. He could be a pure goal scorer. I mean, but he's getting some assists too. He's on a pretty damn good team, but they need to figure out how to get past that first round, I guess. Pretty solid. We do have a couple people here. No, no, just one on the on the Red Wings here. Scary carry. He is the top guy, but yeah. Unfortunately, with the elite potential, he didn't quite pan out. They have no good backup. Another 903. But yeah, every time he's not been on a great team. Hopefully they can turn things around, but only with that 83. I mean, he's he's got, obviously, potential for stat growth. Goalies are, are wild like that. Just needs that stronger supporting cast for sure. Kind of a weaker glove. All right. And the Kings. Or Dylan Benoit. 70-point season, 32 goals. It hasn't yet to make the playoffs. LA still struggling. Yeah, obviously they were. We saw him in that lottery sort of area. Yeah, you can see there. It's not the strongest shot, but he's got 99 awareness and really good puck skills passing 92. So he's more of a hybrid production type guy, but he should be probably a consistent like 30 goal score. You can see here when he's at least in decent shape. Okay, who else is here? Isaac Wallace. Mr. Enforcer. 21 points, not bad. <laughs> hey, if you can rack up 20 points and, and fight, that's what you want from an enforcer, right? Definitely. Yeah, so those builds still around where it's at. Got a couple people here. Your mom's a hoe. Only at 85, but 50. Yeah, what the hell? In 85 points, he got stat growth and then rip. Uh, pretty sure, we, yeah, we beat them in the playoffs, right? Yeah. Only four points in eight games played. That's crazy. Just out of nowhere, an 85-point year. And then right back to <laughs> where he was kind of at before. In that's very interesting. So, yeah, he definitely lost his stat growth. So, he's at 85. But, again, still, still a pretty good build overall for power forward. 
Jake Hughes, who got scratched, played only 10 games in the regular season, man. What the fuck? Did not play in the playoffs at all. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen to Jake here. That's a high top four. Ninth overall selection. He just got caught in no man's land. That is rough. Again, he has the stats to succeed, but not getting the uh, opportunity. Kind of grew in a weird way. Well, they don't have Wallstead extended, so maybe Ungad Singh gets, starts getting the uh, starting time here. Step back from his previous year as a backup. Did he play in the playoffs? I don't know. I guess Wallstead never even got yanked. Oh, probably because they had rotations off. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, there's the build. And we got a couple of people here, including Mr. Franchise, Zach Tracy. There you go, 60 points. Yep, he's continuing to kind of break out as that defensive score. And that's exactly what we thought was going to happen. Defensive to maybe develop a bit later. Did make the playoffs. Eight points in six games played, so he's even a playoff performer. And he's going to be scary. As that team continues to get scary, he gets more support. Yeah. Super scary. You can see it happening now. Yep. Ooh. See a DFT. Oh, man. A DFT with... Yeah, there you go. Zach Tracy's got... He's got the green light now. Uh, There's someone, someone else supposed to be here. No, there's not. Never mind. All right. Where's the Italian? There he is. Stuck behind Shashurikin. <laughs> 83. Oof. <laughs> yes. He has yeah, he had a couple good backup years, but it's been rough. But Nashville's been pretty rough too. All things considered. You guys are getting stuck. <laughs> All these most of these goaltenders are getting stuck in shit situations. Ugh. Good old AI. All right, we got the Devils. Uh, Ziegler. Ziegler. 59 points. There's your breakout. Probably made the playoffs. Yeah, 10 points in 12 games played. Not bad at all. 91 face-off. So it could be someone to eventually... Uh, that has a two-way, too. Should be competing for that. Are they not playing you in the center? Where are you? Second line. There you go. Yeah, it could be someone to eventually compete, but I mean, if you you got Heischer and maybe even Hughes above you, they're you know putting one of them on the wing, but still, Gustafsson, eighty six, nice, damn, seventy point season with plus twenty, had ten and twelve in the playoffs, no goals, all assists. Aren't you a snipe? No, you're a playmaker. And there's that playmaking build. What do they have you second line? So yeah, you're probably playing wing. Solid build, though. We do have Jaron Myers on the aisles here. Mr. Stand-Up. Did they? Yeah, that's right. They signed Saros pretty recently. Didn't play a lot. 901. Not a lot of games played, but I got to check. No, he's got none, no assists. I had to check that because he's, you know, he's obviously built like an old school goalie. He's got 90 passing and like a bunch of puck playing frequency, but he can't get assists apparently. Like, not even a save to an assist. He played 30 games and had nine wins. Rough. But it's a rough team over there in, in, in New York by the looks of it. Yeah. All right, with the rags. We got Michael Ludi, 85 now. Yeah, he's gotten better ever. Well, besides that year, but his career trajectory has been good. 45 points. Uh, swept in the playoffs, only one point. And has a two-way, yeah, strong face-offs, but he's not going to yet. Well, he's actually playing third line, so those are good numbers for third line. Was he getting power play? No, just penalty kill. Good numbers, then. Yeah, pretty damn good numbers. Defensive-minded, and he still is able to score some goals. Or, yeah, get some points. I know I got one more per person here. Mr. Baker, 82. Yeah, kind of caught in no man's land as a defenseman. 18 points, minus 10. Got two goals in the four games in the playoffs, so not too bad. Man, that 82 mark is a tough one to be at for a defenseman. Not a strong skater for a two-way. 
We got Ice Warrior here. He changed to a medium franchise. Uh, is he actually going to grow? That's a shit ton of trade value. They have him extended for two years at a really good deal. He should at least, that should at least cause him to grow more in these next couple years. He did change, yeah. He got 50 points, 23 goals. Plus 15. Only one goal, no, it wasn't even this season. Interesting. I mean, he's got the stats to kind of make an impact. Now, I hope the game makes him grow now more. Yeah, he did. He changed the fucking medium franchise. Hopefully, he gets a nice jump or something like that and takes that into account. We shall see. We got Jelly here on the Flyers along with... Yeah, they're still trying to trade Carter Hart. And they don't have Jelly extended. Good luck. Oh, my goodness. But he is better. Well... At least numbers-wise. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Pretty rough year for Philly. <laughs> the fact you still had a 900 is pretty good. With only 22 wins and played 71 fucking games. They're, they're tanking Hart's value while trying to trade him. I don't know if that's the best strategy in the world, but we are talking about Philly. So, you know. No one on the pens, but we do have someone in the Sharks. Mr. Shooter McGavin, 86. Okay, he's there. He's there. He had a 45-point year, plus 12. No playoffs, but that's a good step-up season for him. Again, absurd offensive stats and a solid shot. Strong skating. He was... Well, it just shows him is where he was on the power play. No clue where he was in the uh, lineup. Seems like he would have been on the second pairing. Who knows, though. To Kraken. Where we got Mr. HD. 38 points. Pretty good. A couple points in the... Pl That's not even the season. Yeah, as a two-way. Again, the offense awareness isn't super strong. The awareness is in general, but still is a pretty good impact player. That's a good amount of points, honestly. Yeah, for a two-way guy. That's solid. Played on the top pairing. Kraft Miner. The goal scorer. 43 goals. So, couldn't quite match to 50, but... To, I mean, hey... 40 goals is good. That's what you want a first-line sniper for. And he had 71 total points. They made the playoffs. Seven points in 13 games played. Not the strongest performance, especially with that minus eight. But that shot is crazy. He could definitely be a 50-goal guy. It says second line, man. I don't know. He's literally their best forward. <laughs> well, besides Shane. Yeah, he should be on the first line. Yeah, and who knows? With the chemistry system, could be. We got Robinson here, 88. Only 50 points, so kind of, but the Blues are pretty shit. Maybe not a great supporting cast. Obviously, they've made the playoffs in a few years. But as a goal scorer, you want maybe a bit more, but maybe he's not, he can't drive plays. He's on a fucking sick contract, though. So why aren't they building better stuff around? Huh? What's the issue here? I see it. Yeah, I see. I don't know. It's not, it's just like, it isn't horrible. Yeah, could be a lot better, though. <clears throat> uh, No one on Vancouver, right? Yeah. Vegas, Karl Marx. There he is, 89. There's another top six who absolutely broke out. 80-point season in Vegas for Karl Marx, plus 32. Yeah, played 17 games in the playoffs, 13 points. Not super, super strong, but good. He's a sniper, but he's a playmaking sniper. Yeah, he doesn't have the strongest shot. It's a good shot. So he should be good for 20, 30 goals. But yeah, he keeps racking up those assists. I mean, you see right there, stat growth. He's an 18th overall selection. He's even solid on the draws. Really good. Yeah, Jacob Dubiel somewhere here. 87 to 23. So there's a bit of stat growth, maybe. 67 points minus no playoffs. But that's his best season so far. He's grown in leaps and bounds each year. And he's been there. Yeah, pretty good build as well. And we got two people here in Winnipeg. AJ, 87 now. He had a 55-point year. He's still kind of waiting for the big breakout. And yeah, we uh, roughed him up in that first round. He's got the tools. Definitely got the tools. Yeah, he's playing second line. I know, we know Parker was on the top line. 86. 62 points. He had four... Yeah, he did his part in those five games where we smoked that team. And as a playmaker, yeah, 
kind of doing what you want. I wonder if they haven't, probably don't have him in the middle. They shouldn't. He's only got 72 faceoffs. But that's it. That wraps things up. So there we go. All the members. We'll make our draft pick selection. Pretty much just grab the earliest guy here, which is Hutchings. With this three year ETA as a two way guy, Aiden Hutchings. 62. Yeah, it's not great. No X factors either. Then the 34 will be next. 75 top six. Hold on. Maybe I should have fucking taken a closer look at some of that stuff. Well. Looks like I missed out. That's fine. Oh, well. Let's just grab the uh, low elite here. Hayden Zanata. Probably going to be around. Yeah, I was going to say, like, it's probably 61 overall since that other guy was 62. So there he is, 61 overall. Those are uh, projects, to say the least. But good news is we have a lot of stuff, you know, already built up. So we kind of have most of our team kind of uh, sort of settled and coming into their own. Still some of them, but, yeah. Our next pick's out 43, which should get us someone else. I think I had everything timed up. I would like how I just... Said fuck you to that pick. Alright, let me check. 43. Hmm. Maybe I was going to... Oh, I think this pick I was just going to take a blind. Yeah. Well, there's a bunch of top sixes here. So, what do we want? Here's a top six. Maybe two-way. It looks like more like a playmaker, though. He at least is a guaranteed top six. And everything after that is not a guarantee anything. Ooh. That's a lot of X-Factors. With three, it's a risk because he, maybe he's like, you know, top nine. I don't think so, though. That's a lot of possible X factors. It leads me to believe he may have some. So I'm going to go for Pascal Colbert here. He is a top six. He does not have X factors. Fuck. Whatever. Top six, at least. So there we go. Now our pick at 95. I'm just going to make sure. I should have everything I need. God damn it. So yeah, 95, and then we had like another 98, and then grab that, and then, yeah, I should be able to get most of these guys. I won't be able to get this guy, but I'll have him, and then I can grab that guy. And I still need to shed one of these picks, so I'll remember to do that, but I could make it pretty much my last pick. So let's do that. Get out of here. There's an elite goaltender. I didn't even bother pinning those elite goaltenders. Like, I can grab one if he's there, but I'm not too concerned. I mean, I can look. Is there one here that I'd prefer? 102. I'd have to grab him now. There's only one more. Yeah, no. <laughs> Let me grab Mestri. Mestri, whatever. Snag him. 61. Meet him elite. That's not bad. He is okay. He is 19. So I should have one more pick here. 98. Okay. I mean, I could grab the goaltender there if I really want value. But it's a goalie. It's not as good as value. But I might want him. You know what? I, I think I want him over the the winger playmaker, to be honest. Yeah, I re, I'm, I'm going to want him over the winger playmaker. I want the center playmaker. I don't need these guys. So, you know what? I'll actually grab Keaton Standard here. He has 20 with five-year ETA. But it's going to be similar trade value, honestly. It's going to be very similar trade value. But if he, like, grows super, super good in one year. Both five-year ETA, so he should maybe even has a little bit more. I don't know. Keaton Standard here. I'm grabbing him anyway. 56. Oof. That's a 20-year-old. That's rough. I'm to the 103 now. Get out of here. I'm not trading my picks. I worked hard for these picks. Um. Oh, I can still fucking grab. Let me make sure I have something for that. I do. I do. I have something like 124, do I? Don't I? 127. Yeah, I can grab that next guy. Oh, I can get two of them still. Nice. Well, I still miss out on one of those top sixes, but that's completely okay. I'm just going to go for these pins here. It's the safest uh, method. Let's grab MacGyver. Yeah, no. Not going to have an X factor. There he is. 52. Nope. All right, now this one I will grab the guy at 134. Why do they want my pick so bad? 
They know I draft real good. They're like, oh, you got those for a reason. So we'll snag this dude. The, the center who was the only one of those playmakers I really wanted. And there we go. Yeah, no X-Factors. All righty. Next pick, 159. I sh that should be good. I think this guy was at like 180-something. 179, yeah. So I can grab him with this pick and then honestly just shed my last pick. Which I'll likely do. Or one of the last picks. I think I have two. So let's get Daryl Richmond here. 68 at 18. That's a really fucking good guy. He's going to have to be a winger, though. Those face-offs aren't strong. Holy shit, he's built well. Good high awarenesses. Wow, that was really good. I didn't even check his ETA because I was going to select him no matter what. That's a sick guy. That's another two-way to add to the list here. All right, so I got to trade one of these picks. Or my last one. I don't know if I have two. I think I have two sixes. I do. Let me trade the 191 for something. Yeah, sure, I can trade with Anaheim. They're right here. Give me your six from next year. And a seven from the next. That's not going to work, but hey. No. I'll just swap a six for a six. There we go. Just kind of put it put it in the bank. And we have one more selection to make here. This guy's close to... Uh, as close as you can get, really. With crash the net too that's actually pretty good because he's likely going to be able to be a role player i think i'm going to take this guy philip dillman might be a grinder too select them yes baby and he's a grinder let's go grinder elite who likes crash the net so that's a good bottom six type player if he makes it that was a good draft man really really good draft can't be mad at that uh don't think anything crazy cool went at the end there so and you can see, drafting quite late now, but hey, we don't need the top, top end talent as much. Just kind of filling out some things of players who might make it can fill some roles for us down the road. But all the potentials we got were super good. Even got one of the medium elite goalies. And we got a medium elite defenseman. So that was uh, that was one where the scouting paid off in the fact that like we had we could at least have picks or maneuver for picks in a good spread to grab all the guys that we wanted. We only missed out on a couple. So that's awesome. All right, up to the resign phase. Uh, it's AHL guys. Speaking of which, which one of my coaches? Yeah, it's the goal. <laughs> Both of our goalie coaches retired again. How did I miss the NHL guy retiring? Whatever. I'll try to keep him, I guess. I sh this should work with the AHL. I don't know. It's always weirder for the AHL ones, but I'm going to do that and see if they accept. All right, keeping the scouts, and I think I'll I'll probably just yeah I could get a better Russian scout, all things considered, but I'm not I'm not worried about it at all. I'm not probably won't if I don't look I don't look. Our scouting team's obviously fine. We're getting pretty good info every single year. Here we are. Let's keep them around. Uh, Poutine accepted that extension. Good. That's what I wanted him to accept right before this day, and that's what usually happens. Uh, so, Mo. Yeah, I think I let him go. If I want to get him back, I could always get him back. I want... We need to kind of... I'm making room. Now. In the system here. Krush, uh, bro. Yeah, we don't... Uh, third liners... Other ones aren't ready yet. Well, Antropov. Maybe. Never mind. If he jumps. Well, if he jumps, I could play him. Since I'm... Yeah, I'm going to let go of Tarasenko for sure. Yeah. Taras eh, he's still only He still is an 84. But I have to get rid of someone. I still have Gurionov locked in. It's tough, but yeah, he, he's going to drop off too hard. Where's his offense at? Yeah. Ugh. He does still have top six, but if that changes the top nine, he's going low 80s. All right, yeah. Going to have to let go of it. Tarasenko. Going to let go of him. I'm going to keep Reinhardt around, though. One more year, we can pay him. Seven and a half, sure. 
keep Reinhardt. He could play wing too if we need him to. But yeah, I'm basically hoping that Antropov is ready to hop up and be third line. He could take over the center role. Play with Gurianov and uh, Reinhardt. Lieb is a playmaker. Probably not going to be ready for NHL. Does he have X factors? He does. I'd love, yeah. Hopefully he makes it up. He'd be solid playing with uh, Antropov. Brodeen's not going to make it, unfortunately. That's okay. Pretty fucking good for AHL, though. All right, yeah. Let me go to all expiring here and decide. Let's see any entry levels. We have a few. Fox. 2166. Grinder, sure. So that's two. All forward so far, I believe. Yeah, and then Muir. Mm, low nine. I didn't trade him in time. Bye. So I can get rid of a couple uh, forwards here. Ludwinski can go. And I guess Savoie. Yeah. And then I'll keep pretty much everyone else. Indeed. Oh, wait. Some of these guys were like, yeah, he was a grinder. May have to revamp that fourth line again. I didn't like it. <laughs> they weren't that good. And they're most of them are too old now anyway. So, yeah, I'll go with like, I'll try two ways this time. Kind of veteran type two ways. Love this guy. He's he's got he's only got one X factor, but this guy can make it. He can be a top six, dude. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Oh, sorry, he's got two X factors. Tape to tape and yoink. So hundred percent want him to make it. Keep it whistle. Regula. Reichel is really good for my depth. Gonna let Bastion go. We're gonna re yeah, like I said, revamp. Excuse me. Okay, give you one year at that price, I guess, buddy. Khrushchev's AHL. Yeah, it won't matter. We'll bury him. Phillips, we can sign. Perfect. We're gonna have to let Slavin go though. Yeah, we have internal room for him. Yep. And let, ah, uh, you know, I could use him as a top six. <laughs> like, I could fucking use him as a top six, man. Like, yeah, he's going to get passed up in the depth chart. What the hell are you doing? You're going to probably get buried. Hmm. Like, yeah, he'll continue to decline, but I could use him as a top... We have a lot of cash. Well, 26 mil. Not a ton, but enough. How much does he want for a year? Not that much. If I can get him for 5.5, maybe. Maybe 6. Yeah, I still have 20 mil. Goaltenders. Okay, I'm going to let Lane in and go, obviously. He's not panning out. I'm going to keep Jones, though, because he's a solid guy. Can I get you on a two-way? He doesn't have interest in a two-way, but what if I maxed him out for one year on a two-way? Let's try that. Probably not. Purcell. That'll be our two AHL goalies, and that's uh, most of the stuff. Let's see if they all sign. Okay, no. Well, we did get the other guy for assistant, at least, so. One of the coaches signed. Those are all the scouts. Okay, Slavin rejected. As did Reinhardt. Oh, man, a bunch. Wow, a bunch of people rejecting. Holy fuck. All right. All right, well, Reinhardt, I for sure want. Hmm. This might get a bit tough. Right, cool, man, what the hell? You're a <sighs> literally a depth piece. You're not even that good. I'm letting Reichel go. He's been nice. He's been solid. He maintained that chemistry, which is why I like him. And that's too much. We're actually starting to get into areas where we have to pay attention to money. All right, let's max out a two-way. 
Regula, same thing. Let me advance a day and see the money situation. Okay, we got Reinhardt. Regula still rejected. What? All right, let's make it one way. I'll do 900k. You might even accept that. 18 million. I'd only have 10. I don't think I can keep slaving. If I want to have that option to get back. Here's the thing. I could keep him if I don't get back. What's his name? Cider. I just really wish I knew if Manning was going to jump. I really, really, really wish I knew. Like, here's the thing. We can keep slaving. Oh, we can keep slaving and, like, for a year. And it could be used in the top four also. If Manning doesn't jump. But we couldn't use Cider in the top six. Yeah, I'm going to go for lock in Slavin. One by six. Puts us around 12 million available. That might be enough to get someone like Cider if we need or want. So, what am I looking at for defensemen? I'm trying to kind of stack things up here. So, obviously, uh, Mackenzie and Poutine, uh, O'Sullivan, and hopefully Manning. Then we'll have Slavin and... Hmm. Kind of a gap right there. Could use Jones, but he, I don't remember, I remember him not having great chemistry. How many defensemen do I have, even? I only have 13. Signing one would make sense. Yeah. All right, maybe I'll look for a nice right defenseman to sign in free agency to be in that top six. Possibly. All right, let me advance a day here. All right, we got Slavin. Regula still rejected. What the hell? All right. I know what will get him now. A one way at one mil. If he doesn't accept that, that's crazy. There we go. Yeah. All right. Locked in. Oh, my bad. Hunter Jones. Two year one way. Let's just do one. Well, could do two years. I'll bump him up to that. He's going to be in the AHL. Yo, yeah, I tried to get him a two-way. That's right, and he didn't like it. Two years at 900K will be fine in the AHL. Here we go. All right, now we got everyone. So we're going to, yeah, so we have four, essentially four missing slots. That's one defenseman and then a fourth line. Oh, and I got rid of my a depth piece, so bear that in mind. May have to look for that. So maybe I have an extra four. That's not a big deal. All right. Get into normal free agency here. Yeah, whatever. He'll just go, and I'll get a new one, or him back. Either way. First things first, we know Trevor Riley's contract is here. Come on, buddy. There we go. Hell yeah, sign it immediately. Anything that shows under 10 asking price is a steal for this guy. Well, it's going to be a good deal, but this is an incredible deal. That's like eight flat actually it can be slightly under it i think yeah seven nine seven five for eight years that's insane for trevor riley lock it in lock it in there we go misa got up to that high elite but we're still waiting for him to you know get to high elite <laughs> Ron's listening at 85 only now. Must have lost some stack growth. Still a good 2C, though. 
Alrighty, anyway. That was the only extension, right? No, I had I do have goalies, but I don't know which one I'm going with yet. Yeah, Pisani says he doesn't want an extension right now anyway. That doesn't really matter. You can still sign guys. Unless they, they may have patched that, actually, in the latest update. Who knows? Either way, I'll try it if I need to. But for now, we'll see what's available in free agency. Dylan Benoit. <laughs> yeah, Cider's there. But yeah, I'd have to just, you know, I'd, I'd have to make a trade for someone if I needed to replace. Because we have to wait for Manning to actually show a jump. So yeah, it makes sense to let Cider go, I think. But our top four is going to be a little questionable. Hopefully O'Sullivan gets another jump. He was up there, now it's, he's only showing 82, but it might be morale. Anyway, not the strongest of free agency classes I've ever seen, but some solid guys there. Luckily, we don't really need anyone. We need a new fourth line. <laughs> That's for sure. So I'll probably look for some like kind of veteran two ways here. Not super veteran though, like not like M M Monahan might not be bad. Bertuzzi. He's got some X factors too. Yeah, I can grab someone like Tyler Bertuzzi. I'd love to find some X factors. Gonna be probably hard to find though. Yeah, Monahan doesn't have any. There's a lot here that we can grab. Yeah, there's plenty. Yeah, Dubé is really good. So I like Dubé. I like Svechnikov. We just need a center after that. Michael McLeod's okay. I doubt we're going to really find any guys with X-Factors. <laughs> Two ways with X-Factors, that is. Yeah. Bertuzzi's kind of an outlier. All right, that's okay, though. There's some things we can get. Blake Coleman. Oh, he's really... Yeah, Blake Coleman I really like for the center. He's got 75 face-offs. So I'm thinking Coleman, Bertuzzi, and... Uh, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, who was it? Dubé. That's who I'm thinking for my fourth line. That's kind of what I'm looking at. Looks pretty good to me. And... Uh, Probably need that top six righty defenseman. Korzak. Okay. I'm look hopefully look for some good chemistry too. Oh, and there's a lefty Severson. Less chemistry there, but Manson probably too old. Thompson. Fits into the second pairing. That's closer at least to uh what we have. Lossie Thompson's pretty good. Truba. And Nadivara. Yeah, it's kind of Nadivara or uh, Thompson. Kind of looks like the best bets. Yeah, it's only going to be like second pairing or anything. Our third pairing's maybe a bit weird, but... As I recall... It's better to have them wanting second pairing than first pairing. Because our first pairing is definitely different than our third pairing. So, yeah. That's what I'm looking at. Alright. So, kind of have a plan. of At least that's my plan of action. You guys have maybe have some ideas here for us. But, uh, yeah. Let me know what you think. Hit that like button. And I'll see you in the next one.